Hey, this is David McKenzie with HDTV Tests, and we're actually off of the, um, I don't want to say the hell of the show floor, but the bright neon lights and noise of the show floor in a much more secluded and quiet and peaceful um, area offsite. We're here talking to um, Nanasis. Um, uh, would you be able to introduce yourself to our viewers? Sure. I'm Jason Hartlove, President and CEO of Nanasis. And probably most of our audience, most of the HDTV test readers or viewers or listeners will have, uh, they'll have heard of quantum dot technology. Would I be correct in saying that pretty much any high-end LED LCD display in the market right now is using your product? Yeah, that's correct. 100% of all the products that are out there in the market today, current products that are out there in the market today, uh, are using materials from Nanosys, either made by us or made under license from us. So speaking of current products, then, the the way it, at the moment is very much to use quantum dots as an enhancement to existing LCD technology to allow to allow what wider gamuts, brighter, brighter display. Yeah, both of those things. So when we think about the backlight system for an LCD display, there's a number of things that limit its efficiency. A uh, big one of those is how much of the light, the white light that's created in the backlight needs to be filtered out in order to produce red, green, and blue subpixels. If we have a lot of, for example, yellow light content in that white backlight, well, the yellow light is useless in the RGB constraint or, or, or paradigm of creating red, green, blue displays. So what we really need to do is get rid of that yellow. Well, that yellow content might represent a large amount of the light energy. So the efficiency of, of displays using white LEDs is lower than if you had a perfect backlight color, which would be perfectly just red, green, and blue. By making red, green, and blue, we wind up with quantum dots in the backlight and no other colors. We make the perfect backlight. That perfect backlight translates to higher efficiency coming through in the front of the screen, but it also translates into much more well-defined peaks for each of the red, green, and blue colors. So this means now that when we go to create in-between colors, we're able to mix those primaries, the red, green, and blue primaries, and create much more saturated and perfect colors in that, you know, whether it's 16 million color space or billion color space, depending on 8 or 10 bit. Um, and you can see this as well when we put up test patterns, for example, uh, showing all of the colors um, with a quantum dot display and a 10 bit 10-bit uh, dynamic range uh, output signal, uh, you can actually differentiate all of the patches in the color table. Um, without quantum dots, a lot of those patches kind of blurred together, and you wind up seeing, well, you know, that whole area there looks pink instead of there's actually individual gradations in the, in the pink tone or the yellow tone or whatever it is. So uh, speaking of competing display technologies, in the exhibit here, you have an OLED display beside uh, one of the Samsung SPVA panels that has it's been enhanced with quantum dots. Really what video file users are hoping for um, is the, the next generation of QD displays, which, uh, as I understand with the graphic here, we might be in a position to move beyond LCD technology. Yeah, so I would say that the next generation continues to be an augmentation of uh, LCD uh, technology, which is actually good in a lot of ways because it makes use of all of the existing infrastructure for making LCD displays, which of course results in a very nice low-cost product platform and, and a lot of other good things, um, very high yields, very efficient efficiencies of manufacturing. But really, as we move forward, uh, what we'd like to do is move from a, a paradigm where we're creating a perfect white light in the background, such as what we do today, by having a blue uh, emitter stimulating red and green quantum dots so that we have red, green, and blue light coming forward, which we then filter out at the subpixel level. So for example, the red subpixel is receiving all this nice red, green, blue light, but we're throwing away the red, the blue, and the green. That's a very lossy process. So all the current displays in the market right now, they're, they're using the photo enhanced method. That's correct. We call it, uh, for example, quantum dot enhancement film. These are photo enhanced displays using quantum dots in a backlight configuration. The next generation, we believe, will be using quantum dots as the photo emissive element in the display. And how this will be done is by taking the uh, blue black light, shining that through the LC panel, and on the front of the panel now having quantum dots so that the blue light as it comes through the LCD shutter 
or not if the shutter is closed, is converted at the last possible moment to either red, green, or blue at the subpixel. This is very highly efficient because you're not filtering any of the light off. So all the blue light comes through the shutter. All the blue light strikes the red quantum dots in the subpixel, printed subpixel, and it's all converted to red light coming out. So very, very nice and highly efficient system. But it also means that the emission characteristic as perceived and seen by the eye is very close to the front of the glass. And so this means that the viewing angle is dramatically improved and basically is exactly the same as you would see with OLED because you have now the emitter at the front of the glass. And secondarily, it means that we have this huge boost in energy efficiency because we're no longer, we've improved energy efficiency with the photo enhanced method by having the perfect white light for the color filter system. But now we're completely eliminating the color filter system. So this means, you know, theoretically, if we didn't have any other losses in the system, we could get, you know, 2.8 to 3x improvement in energy efficiency, which is really tremendous. So it's obviously hard to say, but do you think this is the kind of thing that can be in the market in the next two, three, four years? Well, we have materials today that are ready. Uh, for this. And so that's a key step uh, for the industry to be able to implement these things into commercial products. Materials always seem to pace the development cycle for new products. And so material availability as a material, as an advanced materials company, we need to be at the forefront of that. So today uh, what we have is photo patternable um, quantum dots that are air stable during the, so they can be completely deposited on glass uh, integrated into the LCD process. Um, they can be, they're fully compatible with all of the LCD processing, including the high temperature bakes, the in-air processing, all of the other things that happen. And uh, what we're showing here uh, is obviously the Nanosys logo uh, with black mask, but in the sub pixel, we also have a uh, red, green, and blue sub pixel, red, green, blue stripe, uh, which we can show with a, a magnifier. So this, uh, these materials available today, uh, photo etchable, um, can be deposited, uh, make your red, green, blue subpixels. Now the challenge for industry to turn this into product, of course, is the integration of these materials into those LCD panels um, and those architectures. It's our expectation that that will actually happen in a commercial product either towards the end of 2017 or the beginning of 2018. I certainly believe that you will see this product dis, uh, demonstrated at CES one year from now. So even further afield from that, um, would we be in any, in any kind of position to, to do away with the LCD component entirely? Yes. So as we uh, look at how we can put light energy or put energy into quantum dots, there's really two modes of operation that we can consider using them in. One is what we just talked about, the photo mode, where we stimulate them with photons. Another would be the electroluminescent mode. And in this mode, we can uh, positively force whole and electron pairs into the quantum dots, thereby imparting energy to them and force them to emit. Uh, this uh, QD LED kind of configuration is what we think will come next after the uh, implementation we talked about earlier of photo emissive technology. Uh, in this instantiation, we would not have a blue backlight. We would just have directly a uh, uh, either a red, green, or blue photo emitter or electroluminescent emitter, uh, which would then in turn have uh, the benefits that have long been promised by OLED, but much more scalable to the large scale TVs uh, because of the nature of the materials being inorganic, uh, much more stable, therefore compatible with semiconductor and display process manufacturing, uh, thereby enabling things like uh, vacuum-free depositions and all of the things that the people have long sought to do with OLED materials but haven't been able to achieve because of their hypersensitivity to moisture or oxygen and other types of, of environmental um, trace uh, contaminants. And uh, rough guess, how many years out would this potentially be? Yeah, we think electroluminescent technology in its first uh, instantiation could be as soon as maybe three years from now, but we wouldn't really expect that to be a display level instantiation. And then in a five-year time horizon, I think we could start to see it in, uh, in meaningful display applications. Well, that seems like a great way to wrap up CS 2017. Uh, watch the space for CS 2018, I guess. Yeah. 
Well, thanks. Thanks very much for talking to us. Okay. Thank you very much.